Livingston, our guide for the whole three weeks adventure, greeted Peter and I at the Arcadia Lodge at about three o'clock. Our first stop and baffled us with lots of maps, but assured us that all will be well. He would be meeting us early the next morning when we were going to hopefully see and film the shoe bill. We thought now would be a good opportunity to have a look around the grounds and see what we could find and film. Tomorrow will be exciting when we don't know what you are going to see or able to film. This Verox eagle owl seems to be handling the weather better than we are. Beautiful bird though. Rain does not go well with camera gear. Livingstone kindly lent me a plastic raincoat, so we just had to try our best. We're off, keeping our fingers crossed, just hope we can find one. Wonderful, they found us one. They live in marshy swamps, as you can see, and feed on marbled lungfish, frogs and catfish. They are about five foot tall. Although part of the heron family, they are closely related to the pelicans. They have the same eggshell structure. There are between five and 8,000 specimens left now. They are very vulnerable owing to habitat loss. They are number five in the must-see bird list, so we were very pleased to be able to see them and film them.
We are now very wet, but must leave them in peace. It has been an amazing experience. Going back to the car now. All three of us need to try and dry out. Quite a long drive now, but the weather is starting to brighten up. There are lots of different bird species coming out to dry and preen themselves in the sunshine. These deodre cuckoos doing a territorial display, rather nice. Livingston stopped off at this black headed heroin reef to let Pete and I get some footage. It was a very nice spot. These two black-faced vervet monkeys having a disagreement about who should be on top. The white-throated bee-eater really is a lovely bird. The coffee flower is so pretty, well worth a closer look. These street markets are wonderful to see, so full of colour and activity. You know the driver's not going to be very Obviously happy this scene that, is so very bad news for somebody. We were lucky to see these straw coloured bats as it was getting quite dark. Livingston said we can see them again in the morning. up and out early in the morning. It might be a hot day today, do you? No, that's, that's not true. The, 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 what you have to pay for is the extension cable. That's not bad.
We have quite a long way to go today, getting very excited about what we may see and film on our way. Livingston was right. Here are the straw-coloured bats again, and in better light this time. What a morning we're having, an African grey parrot, one of my favourite parrots. These four splendid starlings look amazing in this light. This yellow bill kite looks stunning in this early morning light. I have never seen Paya Payak before. They are part of the African crow family and closely related to the Central Asian ground jay. Both Peter and I love filming dragonflies and butterflies, in fact all insects, so hopefully we should see quite a lot of them while we're here on our adventure with Livingstone. Our first monkey, a grey cheat magnabi. They live in groups of 5 to 30 individuals in forests across Central Africa. They eat figs and take seasonal fruit, roots, flowers and insects. And here is a red-tailed monkey. Wonderful. Interestingly, they have a dry nose. They live in forests in mid-West Africa and as far east as Uganda. It is gradually becoming an endangered species due to deforestation and over-exploration through hunting and predication. They live in social groups between 7 and 30 individuals, with one male and one female being dominant. They were lovely to watch, being with a baby as well. Livingston is taking us on one of his shortcuts across country. Then we emerge back onto the main road, on our way to Eco Lodge at Budongo. Once we have signed in, we go to Eco Lodge for the night. Up early, then a walk close by a section of the Budongo Forest. They were building a new motorway, 
a very long and very straight, right through the middle of a virgin forest. We soon found a grey hooded kingfisher, and an immature one as well, all in beautiful light. Stunning butterfly! And then this beautiful pygmy kingfisher, only just over four and a half inches long, beautiful little bird. Livingstone brought a colleague of his along to help identify the insects that we might find. Peter was in his element, and I was having fun as well. Amazingly, there are 1,245 species of butterfly in Uganda. They belong to two super families true butterflies and skippers. The super butterflies separate into four separate subspecies and in turn have many subspecies of their own. When you think of it, we have only 54 species in the whole of the UK. Yeah, that's the common diadem. Oh, I thought it'd be common. Yeah. <laughs> the common diadem is having six spots on it. I think now it's time for lunch. We stopped off to see these thousands of African snout butterflies just on the road. Amazing! Livingston was going to show us a waterfall. He said we would like it. Like it? It was unbelievable. To just stand and admire the view, there were several viewing points, and at the right time of the day, there was a rainbow. It really is a beautiful place.
British established the national park in 1952. The Pratting Coal is native to Africa. They migrate peripherally along the east coast of Africa in groups of about 30 birds. Another early start for a launch trip on Victoria Nile to the Delta. Our first hippo, wonderful. This Nile crocodile was huge and so well camouflaged until he decided to leave. Amazing sight. The hippo is native to sub-Saharan Africa and is in fact descended from whales and dolphins. They separated about 55 million years ago. They have one dominant male that weighs in at about one and a half tons. The female weighs in at about one and a quarter tons. They spend their nights eating vegetation. Surprisingly, they are capable of running at about 20 miles an hour for short bursts. They can be very dangerous. So far, we have done very well for kingfishers. They are such beautiful birds. The magnificent fish eagle and the amazing goliath heron, they are huge. This little bitten looked beautiful in the early morning sun. Lake Albert covers part of the Congo and Uganda. It is about 100 miles long and 19 miles wide. It is Africa's seventh largest lake and also the second biggest of Uganda's Great Lakes. Its main source is the White Nile, coming from Lake Victoria. If you notice, this data's main flight feathers are not fully grown yet, so can't take off properly.
We were lucky. Our driver spotted this shoe bill. It was a very long way off, but this time in sunlight, preening. It does give you a better gauge of its size when you see it compared to the data alongside. Our driver was very good and patient. Livingston was there to meet us and guide us through the rest of the day. One of these yellow-billed kites is having a feed on something. It has been an amazing morning. Now a very welcome lunch. Didn't even have time for lunch. There always seems to be something fascinating to see and film. Peter's having fishing lessons now. And just open a little bit that way. This is an adult Piapias, and the next two are immature Piapias, still learning the technique. This grey hornbill is a very handsome bird. Never seen one of these admin stalks before. They look rather smart. These northern ground hornbills are very similar to the southern ground hornbill. And here we have both male and female. These patas monkeys are ground dwelling and distributed over semi-arid areas of West Africa and East Africa. Smart looking monkeys though.
This African open wheel stork loves to eat water snails. Hippos usually come out onto dry land at dusk to feed. Love my new hat. The Goliath heron is huge. It is five foot tall, just standing there. These knob ducks have beautiful colors in the sun. The Rothschild giraffe is a subspecies of the Nubane giraffe. Another incredible morning. Time for lunch. This male Ugandan cob showing his females who's in charge. The Uribi is a species on its own and has eight subspecies, too many to name here. They are found between West Africa and East Africa. Only the male have horns and are just over two foot tall. Admon stork were new to me and quite a handsome bird. These northern ground hornbills are attracted to insects in the burning grassland. All these admin stalks are being attracted to a large area of burning grassland with lots of insects trapped there. Long-tailed glossy starlings are spectacular birds. What a day it has been. We are now traveling back to south of the Nile to overnight at Murchison River Lodge.
This morning, we are heading south to Masindi, via Butena, on Lake Albert. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. You're fine. These grey back fiscal strike look so clean in the early morning light. We stopped to film this black-headed heron and could not believe what happened next. We were so lucky. Luckier than the lizard, I think. Livingston stopped off at this section of the forest to see if we could find anything interesting. And we were lucky. He found a black and white colobus monkey and with a new baby. Only a few days old, we thought. Amazing. The colours in all the different bee eaters we have seen so far are amazing. It has been a wonderful morning and lunchtime already. The blue monkey is native to Central and East Africa. They live mainly in the tops of trees, but do come down occasionally. There is one dominant male, and other males leave the group when quite young. Females stay with the group and stay faithful to one male. These African snout butterflies are not migrating. They are in fact moving en masse to a fresh food source. It can be at any distance. While Pete and I were there at this site, there must have been tens of thousands of them. It was just continuous. We were there for 20 to 30 minutes and it was still going on. An incredible sight. This black and white cascued hornbill has an amazing bill. We stopped yep. off when we saw the brick kiln smoking. Unfortunately, they did not want us to film it, so we had to be quick. Not sure how long it takes to fire the bricks, 
I would think burn for about a day, then cool off for a couple more days. Very interesting though. Fancy a steak tonight, Al? <laughs> Our hotel was very, very nice. And yes, the steaks were exceptionally good. The surroundings were beautiful, which rounded our day off very well. What a beautiful morning, and you can see he is enjoying it. There is something about the African light. It is beautiful. The striped kingfisher is a lovely bird with a distinctive haircut. These colobus monkeys enjoying the early morning sunshine. As we walked along this stretch of road, we could not believe the number of butterflies and dragonflies we came across. This Demoiselle just having lunch. The camouflage of this butterfly was amazing. It was Peter who found it. 
We came to this small stream and it gave us lots of surprises. All good, I'm glad to say. Livingstone managed to name some butterflies for us. Not easy, but he was very good. Some of these damselflies are bigger than I'm used to. Fascinating, no? Dragonflies date back to the lower Permian geological period of at least 250 million years ago. With some species of damselflies, the females do lay eggs fully submerged underwater, but as yet I can't find any records where the male and female still coupled both submerge fully underwater. This poor lady is about to have an unpleasant surprise. This is a very strange animal. It appears to have two eyes and a mouth, capable of catching a damselfly and can move very quickly. But it looks like a shell. Unfortunately, I did not notice this when I was filming it. You almost expect a dinosaur to appear in this scene. It is quite a run to Kibble Forest National Park. I'm sure we will see some interesting things on the way. Go on. Livingston had to stop and do some shopping. This gave us the chance to see some Ugandan street life. Very busy. Yes. Further on, we saw these violets, black weavers, and this one was nest building. Wonderful. Incredibly clever and delicate. A spider waiting for an insect to come to this flower. This tea picker 
telling us off for filming them. This little big eater enjoying a good stretch. We've arrived and seen quite a lot on the way and managed to film some of them as well. Wonderful. Up very early this morning and with our armed guard, hopefully we are going to see some chimpanzees. We didn't have to wait too long before we saw our first one. This one turned out to be a very wise old lady. This wise old man couldn't see what all the fuss was about. He just got comfortable and watched. There's our old lady again. Here comes trouble. Just calm down. Everything's all right. They wander off and we leave in peace. Peter's showing just how big some of these trees are. Some of these amazing spiders have incredible webs. We're going off to a different section of the Kibble Forest. It took a while, but we did find these Mangabee monkeys. They seem to be feeding on a sort of pollen, probably blown in from a different tree. We did get quite a good view and allowed us to get some good footage.
we're heading back to our primate lodge. We're nearly there, but we had to stop and film this nice olive baboon family group. End of another wonderful day. We have an early morning visit to Bigodi Wetland Sanctuary. The light was not good, but we just had to stop and film this beautiful shining blue kingfisher. This great blue Torico is lovely, but it looks almost prehistoric. Amazing colours some of these snails have. Beautiful butterfly, an incredible design. The red colobus monkey is an endangered species. There are eight separate locations in Uganda. They estimate there are only 17,000 left, so we should consider ourselves very lucky. There are some in Tanzania and in the Congo. They eat mainly leaves. They have an average sized group of about 40 individuals. The immense strength they have. This piece of dung will weigh more than the dung beetle. Peter found this tree frog, a very good find. These blue-headed agama are not easy to see either.
We are now off to the famous Queen Elizabeth National Park. You are now looking at 17% of our total number of species of butterflies in the UK on one flower head. Makes you think. It has been a long day, but we have seen some amazing creatures. Another beautiful morning. We're off to explore part of the Queen Elizabeth National Park. It covers 764 square miles, so we won't be seeing it all. This bit looks very good. He is a handsome stag. It does look hot and dry here. This is one of several small lakes caused by violent volcanic eruptions about a million years ago. This one used to be treated like a god many moons ago. It's a layer the killer, you see, attacked by a layer, just hit it. Time for a spot of lunch before we explore the Kazinga Channel. The Kazinga Channel is a natural channel between Lake Edward and Lake George. It is about 20 miles long. African skimmers, what an amazing sight. And our boatman managed to get us so close. That really was a wonderful experience. In 2005, a large number of hippos were killed as a result of anthrax. The channel now has one of the world's largest concentration of hippos and Nile crocodiles. Isn't that a lovely sight? Just less than. This one's got his head in. Oh, 
No, no. Oh no, it's a pair. It's two of them. It's a plum. <laughs> so sometimes they can walk one kilometer. Sometimes it can be 10 kilometers. Between the male and the female buffalo here by looking at the nature of the horns. The horns of the male will protect from the middle part of the head. You wouldn't want to argue with him. He's just letting you know that he's the boss. So they are able to live both in water and on land. Everywhere you look, there's this amazing selection of wildlife. Is this a real plover here? These men getting ready to go fishing. What an incredible boat trip that was. Back for dinner and a very contented night's sleep. Another early start, wondering what the day will bring. What a start we're having. All these beautiful birds facing the early morning sun.
I wonder what these defasa water bags are thinking. Watch how delicately he picked one piece of fruit. This pin-tailed white heart, beautiful little bird with a very long tail. It is a brood parasite, laying two to four eggs in its host's nest. It does not destroy the host's eggs. Its favoured hosts are waxbills. It's fascinating how they pick out individual leaves. This one seems to be in a hurry. An amazing collection of beautiful butterflies. Livingston found us a wonderful place to have lunch. We do have to be careful, these are wild animals. Still a beautiful spot though. We are in Uganda filming these hippos who are actually in the Congo. They don't seem to worry about passports. The river is in fact the border. All these insects you are about to see were very close to where the elephant had been feeding. Unfortunately, we must go and say goodbye to the hippos. Hopefully, we're off to find and film some tree climbing lions at La Chacha. This, hopefully, is where Livingston's tracking and experience will come to the fore. Yes, and there she was, a very full female. A wonderful sight. And here comes another one, probably her son, still climbing. He is probably still learning the knack. We think the reason lions spend most of their days in trees is they hunt at night and eat sometime in the early morning. Later, when the temperature rises, they climb trees to stay cooler and away from insects. As far as I know, there is only one group of lions here at La Sasha and another group in Tanzania. So this is a very rare sight.
Unfortunately, we didn't get a clear view of this martial eagle. It is still a very impressive bird. We have arrived at Bahuma. Tomorrow, we hope to see gorillas. We arrived at Engaji Lodge. Very nice and comfortable. We were getting excited about tomorrow. We're off. It was quite a climb in the truck and then a climb on foot and then there was our first gorilla. Then we were lucky enough to see a baby. Amazing. And then there was Dad. They are huge. A magnificent silverback. He weighs in at about 28 stone and seems very content with his family. This little one seems to want to explore and have some fun. I can't believe our hour was up. It really was an extraordinary experience. When we had got much lower down and had lunch, we went for a walk to see what we could find. It didn't take long to find some butterflies.
The matte butterfly is a really unusual and attractive butterfly. Lahois, or mountain monkey, is found mainly in the upper eastern Congo basin, which is fairly close to where we are now. They mostly live in mountainous forest areas, in small female dominated groups. And we get to the end of another incredible day. We're going on foot in the View Home Forest with another friend of Livingstone's. We soon found our first bird, a great blue Curico. We have seen them before though. I have never seen a white-headed wood hoopoo before. They're rather nice. I find ants fascinating. Just the sheer numbers and their different tasks all trying to help each other. An amazing green beetle. What an incredible spider and web. Not sure what was on that snail unless it was their young. This praying mantis is in no rush. Trying to keep her baby steady. This lovely bar-tailed Trojan is a beautiful bird. We have seen some amazing dragonflies. Well, today we have seen some amazing creatures. We're off to Ruhaija 
a section of the Bwindi Forest. This is about 1,500 to 2,000 metres above sea level. It is quite a climb, yes, but we will be stopping at anything of interest on our way. The African blue flycatcher is a beautiful colour blue and a dainty little bird. These grey crowned cranes are spectacular birds to see close up. These black bee eaters really are beautiful birds. We were very lucky to see male and female with food. They must be very close to their nest, so we can't be long filming them. We had lunch by this river but there was so much to see, we really didn't have much time to eat. This grey-throated flycatcher has built an incredible nest with unbelievable camouflage. I can't believe the number of different butterflies in such a small area. We have been climbing for some time. Variable sunbirds. They really are beautiful little birds. African dusky flycatcher, also building a nest. Early days yet though. When we arrived at Ruhaija Gorilla Lodge, we thought it was set in a wonderful position with a friendly pied crow as well. It really has been a wonderful day. We went off for our jungle walk, but the weather did not look promising. 
we came across these huge worms. They were about two and a half feet long. It did start to rain and the weather got worse but we carried on hoping that it would improve. I think it was only the frog that was enjoying himself. It then started to rain properly but we all managed to get inside a big bush. After about half an hour we decided to call it a day and get back to our lodge. We dried out and after the weather improved, we ventured out. And seeing this golden black back weaver cheered us up no end. This white eye is a beautiful little bird. One of the local lads called us over. What an amazing find. A male Jackson three-horned chameleon, a beautiful creature. Jackson's three-horned chameleon is native to East Africa and is usually six to eight inches long. They give birth to offspring soon before they are ready to hatch from their egg sac, producing eight to 35 live young. And then we managed to find the female. We left our local spot and travelled further afield. Livingston found us two handsome Franklins. This beautiful little bee-eater ended our day very well. We leave early as usual. We're off to the traveller's nest at Kisoro and hopefully see some interesting animals on the way. This was an interesting plant. Bees love it. Livingston and Pete found a lovely great blue Chiraco in very nice light. Seeing this La Hoist monkey tells us we are still very high up, but it's still nice to see. This orange weaver is lovely, never seen one before. This female Jackson's three horned chameleon can change their colours quite quickly, depending on their mood.
It would be very easy to go straight past this rock martin. Their camouflage is very good. We get these stone chats at home. We arrived just after lunch and we were told there was a lot of straw coloured fruit bats in the grounds. They were right, there were a lot. Wonderful. It is a very sociable animal and grows up to 9 inches in length and up to a 30 inch wingspan. It is very widespread but is threatened due to its estimated 127,000 a year being sold for bushmeat. These bronzy sunbirds are spectacular, especially the male. The white-necked raven does have a huge beak. What a lovely duet to end the day with. This morning we set off to Arcadia Cottage in Lake Maburo National Park. We will spend the day getting there and in the park itself. Grey Crowned Crane what a lovely start for the day. Regal Sunbird, what a beautiful little bird. The African sacred ibis is native to Africa and the Middle East. It is a very handsome bird. We were very lucky seeing this lesser striped swallow collecting mud for its nest.
The hammercop here is the only living species in the genus Scopus and the family Scopidia. The lilac-breasted roller is a very pretty bird. Aren't zebras lovely? The Virox owls are the largest owls in Africa. Females are larger than the male, on average 26 inches tall, with a wingspan of about 5 foot 6. They have very large territories of up to 17,000 acres. Warthogs and buffaloes use mud to protect themselves from the sun and parasites. Unfortunately, this is our last camp on our amazing 21-day adventure. Up and out early as usual and discovered this amazing ant's nest. Unfortunately, I can't find the name of the species of ant that built this incredibly neat nest. It must take many thousands of workers. We're off with a boat trip. Hopefully, where we're going to see the African finfoot, a very elusive water bird. We can't resist a quick look at the hippos.
We were so lucky. There was a female. They spent a lot of their time under the water and sulking along the plentiful vegetation along the water's edge and are very rarely seen. Our boatman was very skillful and careful, which allowed us to get this amazing footage. That sighting was truly amazing. Well, the gods must have been with us today, because there was the male, again very rarely seen. The fish eagle really is an impressive bird. Well, I don't think Peter or I will forget this boat trip in a hurry. Sadly, Livingston is taking us on our last game drive. Some of these soldier ants are huge. The toby is a subspecies of the common tessabee and is a highly sociable antelope. Between 1960 and the 90s, the populations of giraffes had crashed by 90%. Only two sites left. In 2016, there were 2,100 Nabane giraffes living in the wild. Of those, 1,500 are Rothschild giraffe ecotype. They are graceful animals and lovely to watch. The black bustard is a handsome bird with the most amazing courtship display.
These are the smallest of the mongoose family and lovely to watch. I think they were cleaning out the old woodpecker's nest. The Eubean woodpecker is endemic to East Africa and is non-migratory. Sadly, we drive back to our last camp for the last time. We're off home now to the airport and I think it is fair to say that Livingston has given Peter and I a wonderful experience, showing us an amazing variety of wildlife in a large part of Uganda. It has been a true adventure.